Well, that's why we need offerings, because we got to fix this AC. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all didn't know there was a message coming dealing with offerings. Hey, shut the doors. Don't let nobody out. No, not in here. Out there. They really get hot. You know, I had a... It was an honor for me to go and listen to my youngest son, Elijah, this morning, minister the Word of God. And he was at Word Alive, where the Word is alive, because Elijah's there. Praise the Lord. But you know, I got to hit. Did y'all record that? Good. Praise the Lord. I ain't scared. You know, but it, it's awesome because he was talking. Where's Josh? We need Big Kyle in here. Where? Oh, my goodness. Dude, don't get any skinnier, man. That boy lost 140 pounds. And I think that found half of us. Hallelujah. I'm, a, I'm getting on their training regimen. But you know what? Uh, we always, whenever the boys got in trouble, and Eli preached the message, and it's so, you know, God is, he's funny. I'm just going to tell y'all. If y'all didn't know that, y'all about to know. God is funny how he does things and how he orchestrates things. He wound up preaching a message talking about who you are, who he is. And today's message for us is who are you? And the Lord, I had a real good, solid, y'all were going to say ouch more than amen type of message. And the Lord at 620 woke me up earlier because I was praying for my boy, but I dozed back off holding my wife. It's so good to be able to hold your wife. If y'all, y'all hurry up and get married if you're not married. Don't do it if you're not married. But uh, I rolled over and was holding my cow babe. And all of a sudden, I dozed back off 620. I woke straight up. And the Lord said, who are you? I said, you know who I am? God, come on, God. I said, yeah, Hulk smash. You know who I am? And he goes, no, that's the message. I was like, wait, well, what about this one? He said, who are you? I said, okay, I'm getting up. So I got up and had to redo the whole thing. Still got that message. I don't think it's not coming. It's going to come, but I think I, I need to taste it and chew it some more before I release it. But, you know, sitting there listening to my son, my baby boy talking, my tail, because I always said, God God ever put a tail on a man, he was my tail. He came and I'm sitting there watching him and I'm listening to him and I'm seeing his, his demeanor. And I'm just sitting back. I'm like, that dude looks good. That's really mini me up there. I mean, his motion, I mean, I'm watching him and he's sweating. Nobody got him a towel. I mean, I, I was going to give him a towel, but I'm like, dude, I'm not in my house, so I'm not going up there. But he, he was really getting with it. And he brought up the fact that one time, you know, I, many of you guys know I, I played baseball, and I had opportunities to go to college and play professional ball. And because of Satan and me listening, I lost it. But yet, look what I gained. I gained you guys. Because guarantee you playing baseball, y'all were nowhere in the picture, neither was Rochelle. So, because of that, I thank God I don't regret it. But Eli wanted to play baseball because Poppy played baseball. So he was talking about a time when he was on third base, and that's the position I played. And they hit, he was like, you know, he was like those kids who get out and center the field. <laughs> Catching butterflies, looking. Everything else, picking up grass. Well, Eli was like that on third. And he didn't tell the whole story, but I was like, Eli, pay attention, get on your toes. Well, he got real quick. He was on his toes. And all of a sudden, no sooner I said that, they hit a line drive to Eli. Eli reached over, he snagged it. Boy, I went crazy. Michelle's like, there he goes again. And I mean, I was yelling, that's my boy, that's my boy, that's my boy. And Eli, for, for a minute, was like, security? <laughs> Can somebody shut that guy up? And, I mean, people were looking at me. Nobody else was yelling. They were going on to the next batter and moving on to the next inning. And I'm still, that's my boy. That's my boy. But then one time, my boys decided to have a party while me and Rochelle were out ministering. 
and I'm gonna keep the story real short. Come on, Josh, come on in here, buddy. Praise the Lord. And see, Eli didn't tell the whole story. You know, they're on a time limit, but we're not. Y'all can leave whenever y'all want to. But in that, all of a sudden, Josh planned an awesome night. Him and his brother were plotting. Okay? And Josh really, don't try to go nowhere, son. Oh, not in front of grandma. Grandma, turn it down just a little bit. But all of a sudden, they're in there and. Yeah, I want to laugh. Uh, so all of a sudden, um, they had a big football game. It was homecoming. And the lights went out in cash. I mean, that whole city, the lights went out in cash. There was a possum that got into the power lines at the substation, and it blew the lights out. So they, the boys were like, it's party time. So they got to the house. We're in Tulsa. We're ministering up at uh, Two Rivers. So all of a sudden, they're partying. You know, none of them guys knew how to drive. Or if they did, they didn't have a car. So there was a load of bikes in my front house. <laughs> I mean, a load of bikes. So all of a sudden, I start sensing, you know, how the Holy Ghost starts talking to you. And it didn't help that Josh called us about ten times. Well, how y'all doing? <laughs> How's everything going? And the last time he calls... We had this huge Econoline van. Karina, she's all chilling in the back because she didn't have her brothers to bother her. She's watching the TV. She's on chill status. So all of a sudden, Josh calls, and I said, hey, what's up? He goes, hey, Bobby, how you doing? I said, hey, I'm doing good. All of a sudden, Josh says, what are y'all doing? And I said, I'm headed to my room because we had a hotel room. But, say but. But. Josh didn't know I was headed to my room from Tulsa. Boy, and I tell you what, that Econoline van, it didn't have no impact stick on the back, and I was booking. I just knew something was up. Michelle was like, not my boys. Not my boys. My boys don't do nothing, Ray. Why can't you ever think the best of them? Why, why, why? And I said, woman, I'm trying to tell you. I didn't say, you don't tell a cow a woman. woman. No, baby, I'm trying to tell you. And, she, and I just knew. You know, it was, it was the cop instinct, the OG instinct. It was the Holy Ghost, HG instinct. All those instincts were kicking in. So I show up. And all these bikes, and I told her, shut those slam the door. And I turned the lights off as I was pulling in, and I knew she was going to slam the door. Because if she slammed the door, the boys know, well, wait a minute, none of the guys drive, and uh, we just heard a door. So I, I, I jumped out, I shut it like a cop, you couldn't even hear it, ran in, and I stood at the front door. And I said, and Josh was sitting down, and Eli was walking, and I think... I think, come on, Holy Ghost, I think he had a beer in his hand. <laughs> and Josh was sitting, Josh was real cool. You know, he, he was big coward then. Now he's Slim Jim coward. <laughs> so he was sitting there, and I walked in, and I was bald-headed back then. Some of y'all don't know me back in that era. But I walked in, and I said, hello, Josh. Hello, Eli. They froze. <laughs> I mean, they couldn't even move. They both thought, run! Their body said, no! <laughs> Josh, you know, he sits down, he, you know, he does some things, but he, you never see his leg. His leg was going. <laughs> and it was like, we got to run. We got to run. And all I said, I stood at that door and I said, if your last name don't end in Garcia, get out of my house. I never seen so many kids fit through a doorway in my life. I was like, whoa! I mean, they were jumping fences. They, I mean, they were booking. And all of a sudden, I looked at Rochelle. Remember, they, they were my boys, right? When, when they were doing real good, they're my boy. That's my boy. But as soon as I said, I looked at Rochelle, and I said, that's your boys. <laughs> And I said, when I was over there, 
I looked at Pastor Danny and I said, hey, I think that was their Indian side. <laughs> and he was like, you think? I said, I don't know. But they were partying pretty big. Not that us Latinos don't party. You know, we don't party like it all. Oh. <laughs> I rebuke that in Jesus' name. You might not party now, but we used to back in the day. But now we get to have a Holy Ghost party. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Eli, it was funny because Eli was talking about, you know, me and my dad came all the way from New York, from Brooklyn, New York. You know, and he was old G, 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 G. He was one of the original G's. And he just went on and he goes, and my mom, <laughs> she was from Cash. <laughs> and he goes, but I'm not going to tell you where they met. I was like, boy, this guy, glory. So, with that being said, who are you? Who are you? That's my question for you today. Who are you? It's quick to say I'm a child of God. Like Brother Larry said, see, y'all gonna learn not to talk because I'll bust you out quick. We say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the Most High God. But as soon as you get outside of this building, who are you then? Who do you say that you are then? But here's the biggest thing. Who does God say you are outside of this place? Oh, y'all ready for this one? You know, Eli, he, he got a good scripture. Oops, I gave him my phone. That's good. He brought up the scripture where Jesus is about to bounce. Did he say that in church? Yeah. He's about to bounce. He's about to take the Last Supper. He's about to take the dip into hell. He's about to be resurrected on the third day. All that's about to happen. But he's around his homeboys. His 12. And they're chilling together. And guess what they're doing? They're busting face. They're eating. They're about to grease. That's why I'm surprised they always draw Jesus real skinny. Every time I turn around, I think Jesus is kind of thick. That's just my opinion. Don't try to say it. He's blaspheming. No, I'm just trying to tell you. They were always eating. I know what happens when I always eat. Revelation. So, he goes and he starts to tell him, look, who do you say that I am? Chris, I just want to know. There wasn't Crystal back then. But he just said, who do y'all say that I am? I just want to know. And they all say, well, I, 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 I said I think you're this person. I, 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 and they're stuttering because they got no revelation. Ooh, y'all didn't get that one. Some of y'all got ball spots that went by so fast. <laughs> Some of them were like, Ooh. I don't know. Peter goes, I got it. I know. And like like Eli was saying, God, Jesus was like, oh my God, not Peter. Why couldn't you pick my beloved? Why couldn't you just pick John, God, to get, get it? But Peter, out of all people, Peter. So nobody else could raise their hand because it was all blank. So all of a sudden, Jesus says, okay, Pedro. See, y'all didn't know he knew Spanish too. <laughs> he said, okay, Pedro. Who did you say I am? <laughs> and Pedro says, you are the rock. You are the son of the most high God. And Jesus goes, <laughs> He said, Peter's got it. But guess what? Many preachers talk about that when he said rock and he changed Peter's name because he was Simon, that's the foundation of the church. Because he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. But here's what he really was. Upon the revelation that you know who I am is what I'm going to build the church on. And who is the church? Boy, about 15 of y'all know who you are. <laughs> We're the church. We're the bride of Christ. We are the chosen ones. We are the selected few. We are the impactors in the city of London. We are Christ. I gotta get a drink. That was so good, I need a drink. This is just lemon tea. 
Sebab dia ada unang Now you know Y'all just got revelation Turn to your Bibles Or like I, I'm going to pick on Eli since I hung out with him Or you can look at the big Bible That's about to show right there To the book of Galatians Chapter 2 verse 20 And listen I don't I use The uh, My Bible version You version and I use Bible Gateway to get different translations so that you understand. So don't get upset. Well, my Bible doesn't say it like that. Well, get your U version. Get your Bible Gateway and you can look up this verse. Okay? So it's not the Satanic Bible. I promise you that. It's not a Jehovah Witness Bible, a Catholic Bible, or whoever, Mormon's Bible. It's the Bible. The Word of God. The living Word of God. Amen? Amen. Let me use something Eli said. Man, I'm just going to pick on that boy. He said that he likes two types of amen. That amen, you know, like we do, we agree. In Jesus' name, and we all said? Amen. Because you agree with whatever I prayed or whoever prays, right? And then there's the double amen, where I might not be ministering good. And you want to hurry up and get me up out of here. So if you want to hurry up and get me done so you can go check on your rows, hit go to corral. Go to corral is getting expensive, man. What did I just say? But anyway, that was a good advertisement for go to corral. But if you might want to leave early, then just every so often throw up a double. Amen, amen. I threw up four when I was over there. Because I was ready to get over here. I'm just saying. Can I say what I say? Praise the Lord. But he did a great job. I'm really proud of my boy. I can see that the legacy does live on, on my side, because I'm the first. The first of the Garcia clan, of the Garcia tribe, to become a minister and a pastor. So he's following that legacy. Karina's following it. And Josh will be, in Jesus' name, following it. He just got revelation. Upon that rock, See, I keep trying to tell him, bro, you can just fall on a rock or hoax smash with the rock. It's just up to him. But in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, it says this. So I am not the living now. So I am not the living, the one living now. I like this. But I can see that one better. It is Christ living in me. I still live in my body. But I live by faith in the Son of God. So me and gave himself to save me. So who's living in me? Come on, man. It's a black and white. I mean, I even gave you the expanded version of the Bible. It's big. Christ lives in us. That's who you are. It doesn't matter who mama said you are. It doesn't matter who daddy said you are. It doesn't matter who your boss said you are. You are the living one. Amen? amen. Oh, I only got one amen, so I can take about another 30, 40, 50, two hours. Amen, amen. Too late. <laughs> Too late. You didn't catch on to it. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 in the woman's book. I mean the amplified version. It says, Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary? The very war room of the Holy Ghost. Oh, that says Holy Spirit. But I like Holy Ghost. Who lives within you. Whom you have received as a gift from God. You. Say me. me. Yeah, you are not your own. You keep making decisions based on what you think. You keep making decisions based on what your mama says. Your daddy says. See, I remember when dad was alive. He would tell Rochelle, hey, baby, they're going to have power elections. And Rochelle would be like, okay, Dad, who do I vote for? And she would vote for whoever Dad said. She didn't know who this guy was. She didn't know if he was good, if he was crooked, if he was going to help the tribe or not help the tribe. She just knew Daddy said 
vote for him. But see, the right decision is saying, God, who do you want me to vote for? And I'm not a politician, but I'm going to say this, that everybody that's elected to authority is selected by God. So you need to find out when you go to vote, whether it's for the United States, whether it's for the Kawa tribe, whatever it's for, God, who do you say needs to be in that position? Because I want to vote for the right one. See, we make too many decisions on our own. And that's why we wonder, why do I keep failing? Why do I keep falling? Why does it seem I can have a job? Why can't my wife be happy? Why can't, why, why, stop complaining and ask God. God, what do you want me to do? We're saying that we're Christians. We're saying that we're Christ followers. But we never ask God for his decision. And some of you may ask, but do you wait? Do you wait? God, I asked you 10 minutes ago. That's all right. God, I'll go ahead and do it and you'll bless it anyway. You're right. That's the thing that all of a sudden, you're... Ooh. Here we go, Crystal. <laughs> Buckle in. Crystal got double harness. <laughs> Your poor planning doesn't constitute an emergency for God. Your lack of asking God for revelation on the decision you have to make doesn't mean now you put God on the spot and you say, you got to do this. God's not your prostitute. Just because you brought your tithes doesn't mean now you tell God, well, you owe me. God don't owe you jack. He gave you everything on the cross. He gave you his beloved son. And he not only gave him to you, he put him in you. And then he put his spirit in you. And you walk around thinking God owes you something. Come on, I tell you what. I better back up. Security. Y'all go ahead and rush up here. That's right. Holy Ghost smack! when you think you can make the decision on your own. Amen. Yeah. I made a decision on my own and I married that beautiful car woman. Don't let me tell you what she had on. She, oh, and Margie's here. <laughs> and Margie, don't you gotta go bathroom? <laughs> I'm gonna tell her anyway. If I bust all of y'all out, she had a real bad looking mini skirt. See, Mana Maria. And she had, she had fishnet stockings on. And she had them pumps. And she was pumping my heart, baby. I was like, Lord. And she had that ratted hair. I mean, Shaka Khan didn't have anything on her shit. And I never went out in the city of Lawton. I always stayed in the barracks. And this brother kept saying, come on, Ray, we got to go, man. We got to do something, dude. You always... I'm like, dude, this is Oklahoma. You can't party in Oklahoma. I mean, I partied where the real parties were at. Amen. And I'm like, dude, ain't nothing here. There ain't no clubs. Oh, dude, this is bad club, man. They play all kind of music. And I was like, all right, let's go. I walked in that club. And I... Rochelle will tell you what I had on, but she better not... <laughs> but I walked in that club and I sat down and I got me an orange juice. Because I wasn't a drinker. I'll tell y'all later what I used to be. But I wasn't a drinker, so I sat down with the orange juice and I looked and I see Rochelle and I told that brother, I said, Yo, brother, that's my future wife. Aww. He said, Dude, you crazy. This is the first time you go out. I said, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, that's the woman I'm going to marry. And that was 28 years ago. And I'm more in love with her now than I've ever been. And she don't have to wear a mini skirt. She don't have to wear fishnet stocking. Because you know what? 
I know who lives inside of her. And that's what I love. It's the kingdom that's inside of her. And I get to enjoy it every day and every night. And it's good. You know, everybody thinks, well, it's got to be great. For it to be God, it's got to be great. God created everything. That's right. And all he said was, it's good. So, she good. Colossians chapter 1, verse 11 in the Amplified says, We pray that you may be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience, perseverance and forbearance with joy. What did that tell you? I'm going to go through some stuff. I'm going to go through some stuff. I'm going to, there's going to be issues. There's going to be challenges. That's the better word. I don't say there's going to be problems. The youth growing, the children growing. Look, normally this place it ain't this packed. When the kids bounce up out of here, it's like I got to... Can anybody come through the middle, please? I don't have to do that no more. I just get to walk more. Guess what, guys? It's just a challenge. God's got this. If God gave the vision, He's going to provide the provision. He's going to touch your heart. And He's going to, you're going to, he's going to tell you, Hey, hey, those kids need, they need a place to really worship. You get to worship. Watching those kids have enough room to worship. If they want to jump around. If they want to wave flags. Look, why don't you go ahead and give what I told you to give last night? That's right. And quit taking out that dollar. Ooh, y'all didn't like that. I didn't hear not one amen. Son, I heard crickets. The rocks will cry out when you start talking about money. Ooh, my, my, my. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Again in the Amplified, and it says, He raised us up together with Him and made us. Are you serious? He made us? No. Jacob, He made you. Look, look what it says. To sit down together. Together. Whoa! He took the foolish things along. All these remnants and misfits that are sitting here today. Don't you call me that. I just did. Because you've been rejected. You've been abused. You've been talked down to. You have been the worst of the worst. And see, I'm saying that in, in good. I'm, I'm not adding any other words. You know, those other adjectives that you've heard. But that's not what God says. That's not who he says Amen. that you are. You got to get revelation today. Amen. That you are oh, the son and daughter of God. <laughs> Papi. Hey, Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Giving us joint seating with him. Amen. That means I sit with him. Hmm. In heavenly places. Ooh. Amen. Ooh. In heavenly places. I'm sitting right with him. Amen. And he is sitting right with me. Oh man. Amen. In heavenly sphere, but virtue of, of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Ooh, guys. I'm excited. I don't know if you can tell. Colossians, the second chapter, verse 12 says, When you were baptized, you were buried with Christ. Amen. See, some of you did the ritual and you got sprinkled with water. They just... Ow. There you go. a little sprinkle. Whoa, the rest of my hair. Joe, I got won't get messed up at all. It's good. Some of y'all went ahead and got water baptized. But you're still doing the same thing you did. There's no change. We have to understand the scripture. Jesus didn't come up the same 
way. He was buried. But guess what? When he arose, I, I'm almost positive he came out and she goes, Jesus smash! And them devils just started rolling. They were like, yo, yo, dude, he's alive. No, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you. He's alive. No, no, he's alive. I'm trying to tell you. He's alive. They, they were freaking out as hell. I know they were. Ooh, did I say hell? That's what he did. That's what he did. That's right. You're not supposed to say that in church. Well, read your Bible. And you were raised with him because of your faith in God's power. Not in your power. See, when you've been water baptized and you've been submerged, that means I get to hold you underneath. And if I know your background, I may hold you a little bit longer. That's why Josh don't want to get baptized by me. He's like, Papi, you got to let me out. I got you some, Papi. Wait till the bubble stops. Ooh. You were raised by his power. By his might. But see... We don't think that way. We still have our stinking thinking. We still have religiosity. Oh, here we go. Somebody prime me up. You still have a lot of book knowledge. But you ain't got what Peter got. Revelation. Revelation. And he said, Jesus said, dude, you didn't get that out of theology school. That's right. I'm trying to tell you. You got that from God. God gave you that revelation. The Holy Ghost came and told you who I am. Now, Peter, Pedro, let me tell you who you are. I don't talk with that much Puerto Rican accent. Karina says when I preach, the, Puerto, the New York accent comes out. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's up to y'all to tell. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. <laughs> but he was trying to tell Peter. Dude, it was God that gave you that. But then if you keep reading, it tells you that he... Oh, God. I think I would have got mad at Jesus. All of a sudden, Jesus tells me, Yo, Ray, dude, oh boy. <laughs> You're my brother, man. We, we, we down for life. You know what I'm saying? He probably did one of his homeboys. <laughs> Pastor Jim's like, yo, what's this Puerto Rican doing? I'm a white boy. <laughs> Come here, brother Scott. Me and brother Scott can do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure Jesus was hyped up. He was like, woo! He got it, baby. He got it. And then all of a sudden, Jesus said, let me tell y'all. Hold up. Yo. Slow your roll. <laughs> and they said, let me tell you a little something was about to happen. I'm about to die. And Peter said, yo, Jesus, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got time to die. <laughs> See, some of y'all don't know about Willis. <laughs> How'd he go? I used to watch it. You talking about Willis? <laughs> you guys missing out. I'm trying to tell you. Y'all laugh anyway. So that's how Peter was acting. Pedro said, ¿Qué lo que pasa aquí? Yo, es lo que pasa él. Tú estás loco. Oh, I forgot I was in English service. He said, dude, you crazy? That ain't gonna happen. We, we boys. I got your back, man. They ain't gonna come kill you. I'm security. <laughs> Jesus said, Satan, I rebuke you. One minute he calls him Peter. He changes his name. He redid his birth certificate. And he calls him Peter, the rock. But then the next minute he says, Get thee behind me, Satan. You know why? Because he lost the revelation. Here's why he lost it. Mm -hmm. oh, you religious people, y'all better be ready. Because here it comes. Because he wasn't saved yet. Not only was he not saved, he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. Ooh, that messed y'all theology all up. Look at Pastor Tina's guy get a tissue. 
She said, Jerome, pass me a tissue. See, that was Michael Jackson's deal. See, y'all missed that one too. You know, you remember that, right? I'm like, Jerome, give me a tissue. I'm about his color too. But see, he wasn't saved. Peter was not saved. When Jesus told him, yo, dude, stop fishing, stop what you're doing, throw the net away, and follow me. He didn't say, Sorobokorabasi, now in the name of me, you're saved. <laughs> he didn't say that. And not, at least not in the Bible I read. He didn't say that. He said, come on, we're fixing to bounce up out of here. Peter said, yo, what we doing? What we doing? Yo, yo. She said, oh boy, we're going to change the world. See, he, but he never led him to himself. Which means he didn't lead him to the love. Did he? None of them. But what happened? Uh, when the Holy Ghost showed up. When they were in one accord. You don't have to follow me. I'm good. She's turning that camera real quick. He's going to be way back here. Oh, y'all better not be asleep now. Y'all better stay awake. He said, ha -ha, he said, when I bounce up out of here, you ain't going to be by yourself, Jesus. I talk, his name is Jesus. Jesus was the one talking, talking to Jesus. Ooh, he said, you're not going to be alone because I'm going to send you a comforter. There's going to be a more awesome homeboy coming. Yeah. Oh, oh. You, it's the Spirit of God. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to indwell in you. Yeah. You're about to get infused with who I am. Yeah. The great I am. Yeah. He's going to penetrate everything that's in you. You're not even going to know what to do. And guess what happened? Who's the first dude who preached the first message after being saved and getting filled with the Holy Ghost? It was Peter! He got the revelation! He knew right then and there. Whoa! Whoa! I know what my boy Jesus was talking about. Because what lived in him is now in me. And there was 3,000 added to the church. I'm just wondering. We're preaching the truth. Why aren't there 3,000 people here? That's right. Come on. You want to know why? Because it's the church supposed to be preaching the truth. Not just me. You're the church. You're the living one. The Christ is in you. The Holy Ghost, full of power, is in you. He said, I've given you all power, all authority. And check this out. <laughs> He's giving you the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. But if you don't know how to use it, that's all it'll do is sit in your pocket. That's right. Come on. Or you'll walk around like a janitor with about 40 keys. <laughs> you won't even know where to put it. <laughs> but He's given us, as children of God, the power and the authority and the keys. Our yes is yes in heaven. Amen. And our no is our no in heaven. Yeah. Ooh, I can preach on that one about the table. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all gave me another hour. I didn't hear nobody say amen, amen. amen. Too late. <laughs> Security, go ahead and take out. Oh, I need these. That way I can see your faces. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! God's power was shown when He raised Christ from the dead. His power will be demonstrated in you when you raise from the dead. Oh, well, Pastor Ray, I've been baptized already. Come on. I'm still looking for the Bible. I'm still waiting on a demonstration. I'm still waiting for that power that He infused you with to be manifested. We are supposed to be 
about our Father's business. You are equipped. I am equipped for the work of the ministry. The ministry ain't just here. The ministry is not a 2810 Northwest Sheridan. This is where you come and you receive and you get puffed up and you feel like the hope. And then you walk outside and you manifest it. Amen. You don't walk outside and say, Oh, you mean? I can't do it like Pastor Ray. You got that right, you can't do it like me. Because I'm me. Right. You, you. Right. You got to do it like you. Right. You can't do it like me. Trust me. You can't be crazy like me. Oh, yes, I can. Really? <laughs> Show me. All of a sudden, we just landed in Missouri. She's like me. All right, we're fixing to put it to the test. I ain't scared. Don't be scared. She's like, I'm scared. Son, you about to get a whipping when we get to the house. I'm going to show you what Kyle was really did back in the day. Next time we see Paul, he'd be bald-headed. That's why I stay bald, bro. Every time I messed up, Rochelle scout me. I'm trying to tell you, dude. And she broke out clippers. It wasn't with a knife. <laughs> Believe that. Mama throw that shoe wrap it around the corner four times, clock you in the back of the head. I'm trying to tell you. Mama knows. My mama, is, when she wear her pumps, then they do a hook. If I get hit and then she... I'd be like, mami, como tu hiciste eso? No te apure. Mom, how'd you do that? Don't worry about it. See, I can translate that small stuff. <laughs> the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8 and 10, through 10. It says this. Oh, back there is real small. So don't be ashamed to tell people about our Lord Jesus. I can just stop right there and tell y'all go home, but I'm not. It's your responsibility to tell people about Jesus. No, it's not. It's the pastors. The Bible says we're all ministers of the gospel. We're thinking it's all up to me. You have to start learning to say, if it is to be, it is up to me. It's up to you. And don't be ashamed of me. I am in prison for the Lord. But suffer with me for the good news. See, some of y'all are like, whoa, right there. I don't want to suffer. I, I don't want to go through nothing. Really? How's that working out for you? I don't, I don't want to. But suffer with me for the good news. God gives us the strength to do that. God saved us and chose us to be His holy people. Yeah, I'm holy, but you're not willing to suffer. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. I'm called to ministry. Yeah, but you don't want to suffer. I'm called to this ministry. I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, but you forgot you're called to suffer too. You're going to be persecuted. I hope. Say, I hope. I appreciate y'all saying that. That nobody will pray for those of you that are married. That nobody prays for your divorce like it was done to me. Oh, y'all got real quiet. That's all right. I don't mind getting persecuted. I don't mind being hated because I know that I'm one of the beloved ones. Amen. See, you get jacked up because you still don't know your identity in Christ. Because you're still an orphan. And the Bible tells you you're not supposed to be. But when you know who you are in Christ, it doesn't matter what people say. You're more concerned what is God saying. God, I'm all right. If I suffer for you, it's all good. <laughs> but not because of anything ourselves we did. God saved us and made us His people because that was what He wanted. And because of His grace. Here's the reality, folks. This scripture confirms what I've been saying since day one. April of 2014. We've been called to build relationship. Amen. We haven't been called to fellowship. Most of y'all got a doctorate degree on that. But your relationship skills are still jacked up. Because you can't get along with the person sitting right next to you. 
Amen. Well, dude, you don't know it's my wife. Right? How's that working? I sat in church. I traveled all over the United States, went to Canada, and my relationship with my wife was jacked up. But when I got a relationship with God, which is why Christ came, He came to save me from hell. Don't let that preaching fool you. Hell wasn't created for you. But if you don't choose to have a relationship with God, that's where you're going. Oh, he's preaching about hell. You got that right. It's real. Amen. Churches don't want to say that these days. I keep thinking this hole is my pocket. <laughs> Churches don't want to talk about hell and where you spend eternity if you don't get it right. Oh, well, I've been saved. Once saved, always saved. Really? Ooh, I heard my sister. Ooh, girl, you got just that hocus stuff to rise up. <laughs> You'll go to hell if you don't get a relationship with God. You can serve Him. You can stay at the Impact Center. You can be one of the pastors of the Impact Center. You can do all that I ask you to do. But if you don't have a relationship, you'll be split in hell wide open. There'll be a neon sign. You know how you get to the airport and they're looking for you? <laughs> There'll be a neon sign right here. That dude up there, that crazy Puerto Rican from New York trying to tell you, but you didn't listen. So come on in. And I remember back in the day they used to say, oh, there's going to be a party in hell. Yeah, right. There ain't going to be no parties in hell. Right. You're going to have to endure every negative thing. Sickness, disease, rape, everything that you can think of goes on in the world today will be even worse in hell. All because you thought you knew it all. All because you knew the Bible. All because you got all these doctors, Dr. This and Dr. Jordan and Dr. J and all hanging on the wall. Mm. You thought you were going to make it to heaven. That ain't it, guys. You got it sadly mistaken. Because that ain't going to get you to heaven. The revelation of who God is in your life and who you are in His life is what gets you to heaven. Mm. A relationship with Him. That's why Jesus came. God wants a relationship with His creation. That's why I want a relationship with my kids. That's why for eight years, I prayed my little son, Josh, I can finally say that, to come home. Because I wanted a relationship with him. It was tough. He lived in Midwest City. I lived in Lawton. Well, couldn't you call him and text him? I'm busy just like he's busy. I didn't call him all the time. But guess what? I was a daddy who prayed and called my son back in and then began to thank God. I said, yo, dad, that's your boy. And you happen to bless me with him. And you bless that little cowboy babe with him. And we're calling him in. And the Bible says that the fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. Wow. And there's the endowment of my son here in Lawton, Oklahoma right now. But you know why that happened? Because I sought God. God, do you want Josh here? If you don't want Josh here, don't bring him. It doesn't matter what I want. I pray for it, but God is what you want. If you want him here, you bring him. I'm like, man, God, did it have to take eight years? They took whatever it took. Whatever it took. Because guess what the number eight is? New beginnings. Y'all didn't get that one. Here's what verse 10 says. And now it has been shown to us in the coming of our Savior Christ Jesus. He destroyed death and showed us the way to life, to have life. See, you're only going to have life is in Him. You ever heard anybody tell you, hey, get a life? I love it when they tell me that. I have a life. What about you? Where are you going to spend the rest of your life? They're like, the Lord comes to me. I'm trying to tell you, bro, I got the way. It lives right in here. 
Mm-hmm. He destroyed death and showed us the way to have life. Yes, though the good news, Jesus showed us the way to have life that cannot be destroyed. When there's a relationship with God, it can't be destroyed. Unless you choose to. You're wondering, well, I don't feel God. Number one, don't base it on feeling. But you base it on feeling because you don't have a relationship. See, I know when Rochelle's gone. I know. Nobody has to tell me, hey, Rochelle left. Because there's a sense within me because of the relationship that we have that when she's not around, there's a longing to be with her. And here, oh man, this is good. <laughs> it doesn't matter if she feels like oh, man. Damn. Pastor T, you got to give me some death. Ooh, it doesn't matter. Let me tell y'all, this is a white girl that has a black girl inside. <laughs> and that's a black girl with a white girl inside. <laughs> Lord, get that man, get him done, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Too late. I'm getting my second drink. My Here's my second win, baby. I like it when I take my glasses off. I can't see the clock. Rochelle's like, y'all make that clock bigger. <laughs> Ooh, Jackie. Ooh, girl, it's good to have you home. It's good to have the Darling family here with us. Yeah. Y'all don't realize the blessing they are to me. Ooh, she gets to see her brother really fired up. Sweat. Man, it's hot. Or is it just me? I got sweat running down my legs. But here's the thing. I don't base my relationship with Rochelle on how shy, how Rochelle feels about me. Guess what? Y'all can say what? what? Don't too late now. I told you to. <laughs> I'll send Rochelle these long texts. I mean, these fat thumbs. They know how to roll on that iPhone. That's an advertisement for iPhone. Thanks to Karina. Boy, I, I mean, I, baby, you just don't know how much I love me. Oh. You mean the world to me. You, know, you said those to Rochelle? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I told you, y'all gotta watch what you say. My daughter always says, do you have a comeback for everything? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> baby, you, you know what? How do you spell what? What? Okay. God cried when he let his angel come to me. I love you, Negrita. No, I didn't say the N word. That's just how Puerto Ricans call their woman, Negrita. Ain't that right, Jaime? Te amo, Negrita. And send one of those uh, smileys. But their lips aren't as big as mine. Emojis, yeah. But they got itty bitty lips on that. Those are white lips. I'm not racist. I love y'all all the same. Here's Rochelle. K. I mean, she doesn't put O K A Y. She doesn't even do O K. She just put. K. <laughs> she does the same thing. <laughs> K. I'm like. Shoko <laughs> Lord, I gotta get in the spirit. <laughs> but guess what? I understand my wife. Why? Because we have a relationship. And she doesn't have to text me this long message like I take her. I don't need an amplified version from Rochelle. She amplifies it when she cooks that good old meal at the house. She shows me how much she loves me then. 
when she cleans the house. And I go to clean it. She said, no, baby, just stay right there. See, some of you young people don't understand that. But old school, oh, old school, you take care of your man. See, young people like, you do it on his own. <laughs> he broke. I'm talking, I'm taking you back, say way back. Yeah. Rochelle came from old school. She took care, she takes care of her man. And I tried to, and I, I promise you, I tried to. She's like, go outside, take care of the yard. <laughs> Hello, Jesus. Did I know you? <laughs> Keep it 100. Hey, hey, brothers, if y'all want to take care of your yard, see Jesus and Geraldo. They got an awesome lawn care business. That's their advertisement. Praise the Lord. What does that have to do with the message? It has to do everything about a relationship. Y'all keep losing that main word. Relationship. I don't need Rochelle to do everything I do. She's got to be Rochelle. I couldn't marry me. Shoot, one of us will be dead. <laughs> oh, both. <laughs> She's got to be her, and I'm going to be me. Now, there's a little bit of her inside of me, but I think there's a whole lot of me inside of her. Because y'all don't know how she used to be. Now, we got to, hey, baby, you said you didn't want that clock back there with son of the Martina. I'm the one that's supposed to preach. <laughs> And then Karina. Karina got that one. She was super quiet. Like y'all right now. <laughs> I don't even sweat this much on election day. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. What are we talking about? <laughs> You're both right. Yay! <laughs> we'll give you a free gift card to Three Amigos. Oh, not. Well, they got happy. First Peter chapter. <laughs> Baby is slipped. First Peter chapter two verse nine. But you are a chosen race. Okay. Oh, so you mean he chose Puerto Ricans? Yeah, he did. You mean he chose Mexicans? Yeah, he did. Iowa. Iowa. You got to say it right, brother. Iowa. <laughs> you mean he chose Panamanians? <laughs> well, them some quiet Panamanians today. <laughs> they must be on reserve. <laughs> he chose... <laughs> even with white in them. I'm a... <laughs> I think I'm going to start calling that M&M. Oh. Brother Scott said, what you going to call my wife? <laughs> Sister Janetta. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> See, you're a chosen race. Yes. You're a royal priesthood. Yes. You're a dedicated nation. Yes. You've been handpicked. Yes. Out of all the crap that you've done, he was willing to pay the price yes. so that you could be a part of his family. So that you can be a relationship with him. Yes. He did it, not you. Yes. All you did was say, I do. But you haven't done. I do. See, Rochelle wouldn't have stayed married to me if I didn't done. I said I do, but I did, and I still done. It's about a relationship. I got to put in mine and she's got to put in hers. But it's the same thing with God. He put his, but he's still waiting on yours. You still trying to withdraw and God saying, yo, homeboy, you overdrawn. But God, I thought I had an overdraft. Yeah, it doesn't draft it out. Oh, you're God's own purchase. Special people. And he don't mean special ed. Right. You're special. Why? Because he picked you. Yes. He pulled you out of the junk. Yes. 
And he said, you belong to me and I belong to you. That you may be sent forth the whole wonderful deeds and display the virtuous and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you mean I got to show perfection? Yes. But I thought my pastor, my other pastor, I can't remember which one because I've had so many. Ooh, y'all didn't get that one. <laughs> Ooh, I can get away with that one. You got it. My 52nd pastor said, I figured y'all get it like that. <laughs> That I'm not perfect, that only Jesus is perfect. Are you not supposed to be Christ-like? You're supposed to be striving for perfection. You're supposed to be striving to do everything that you do to please Him. Everything you do at a level of excellence. That's why if I walk by, see, I see a little paper. I pick it up. Because one day... It's going to be a $100 bill, and I guarantee you, you ain't going to beat me to it. <laughs> Race match! <laughs> See, it's the little things you do that God is watching, and he's writing down in your book. And I'm not talking about the book of life. I'm talking about your book. Mm. Yours, with your name, with who he says that you are. It's written right there. He's got your name written down. And he's writing a book. And at the end of the day, let me see what Jason Scott did for me today. <laughs> oh, he manifests my presence in the army where he's not supposed to because it's a government job. But he didn't care. He laid his life down for me and he witnessed about my goodness to his co worker. Ah, oh, that's my boy. <laughs> that's my boy see it doesn't matter whether you do a lot of people have preached this that if you mess up you're not God's boy <laughs> say no way you know why it's no way because of his grace and his mercy his grace and his mercy says, you're still my boy. You're not doing it the way I'm telling you, knucklehead. But you're still my boy. You're still his. And we have to understand, wouldn't you want to make your daddy happy? Karina tries every day. Because she thinks I'm going to be the one buy her a 2017 Mustang. And it's Jesus back there. And so she's like, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Money coming. <laughs> it ain't going to be my job no more. I love her, but you know what? El que se casa, pa su casa. Let me break that down for you English-speaking folks. You who get married, to your house. You got to bounce up out of here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of the kids are like, oh, don't say that, Pastor Ray. I'm going to get married because Daddy takes good care of me. Uncle Pastor Ray is here now. Galatians chapter 5. Verses 22 and 23 in the message says, but what happens when we live God's way? See, that's why I like the message. Because it breaks it down for, for people like me. Okay. So it tells me in Matthew 6, that if I put God first, and I find out what His ways are, and I do it His way, He says everything will be added. Well, you know what, God? I don't understand that. I know y'all don't ask God questions, but I do. Something like God, break it down. Break it down New York style. He says, okay, I got this, homie. He brings gifts into your lives. Much the same way the fruit appears on an orchard, in an orchard. Things like afflict affection for others. See, here's the deal. 
you're a son and daughter of God. He demonstrated his love, right? Come on, y'all can say, do I need to go to that scripture too? That he demonstrated his love? I'll tell y'all, John 3, 16. Most of y'all can quote it. But you have no revelation of it. See, he gave up his beloved son because he loved me. I don't buy any of y'all. But I know he loved me. So because he loved me, and he demonstrated so much love, that's why I love you. <laughs> Some of y'all want to... But God tells me, right? I don't do that to you when you deserve it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Daddy. I love you. Just let me lay hands on him and then I'll, we'll pray together, God. We'll give you that they recover. Be like, son, I love you. And I've demonstrated my love. So the greatest commandment is this, my son. Love them as I have loved you. But everybody's got to do that. Not just me, because I'm the pastor. We all got to love each other. Because God demonstrated that love for every single body. For the church and the unchurched. But is the church demonstrating the love of God? Exactly. No. Because you're too busy talking about the person on the other aisle. You're too busy criticizing the way they do their ministry. But yet you won't volunteer to help them. You're busy complaining. Oh, that was the message, no more complaining. And I can't help but go into it. We're so busy complaining about every other ministry. But guess what? The people that complain are not willing to lay their lives down for that ministry. Somebody heard from God and stepped up. And because they don't do it right, you think you got the right to criticize them. Why don't you just submit and love them and help them and pour into their life? Why don't you be about your father's business and demonstrate the love of God to them? Instead of complaining, whining. What was that famous quote that Puerto Rican said? There's no whining in ministry. You're thinking, there is. Really? Show me where Jesus whined. Show me where he complained. When he had to carry the cross. When they beat the fire out of him. When they spit on him. When they ripped his beard off his face. That mama couldn't even recognize him. Not one time did he complain. Not one time did he say anything but what? Not my will be done. Daddy, whatever you want, I'm going to do. What are you going to say that it means? And lay your life down for him. I don't want to, Pastor. I like my little demons. I'm going to keep them. But that's not God's intention for you. God has an inheritance. And he wants you. He keeps calling you. My beloved, let me tell you who you really are. Let me tell you who I say that you are. So that you can understand and get a revelation. So that you can be the church instead of just going to church. Stand to your feet.